Welcome to a tutorial about Untwine. In this video, I'm going to cover three common issues we can get ourselves into when working with Harlow 3.3. So pretty commonly, as we're creating passages and creating different parts of the story within Twine using Harlow, we can fall into some common issues. This video, as part of a set of videos, is on debugging these issues. So we're looking at common issues we can get into and solutions to those issues. Let's start with a pretty common one. We forgot the right symbols, or we're not using the right symbols in the right order, or we've forgotten the correct number of them. Pretty commonly when we work within Harlow, we're using lots of different symbols. Open and closing square brackets, we're using various parentheses, colons, all kinds of different things in different combinations. Sometimes we can get ourselves in a little bit of trouble if we don't have the right symbols or the right number of symbols. So let me show you a pretty common variation of this right here. So I've attempted to create a link to another passage using two opening and two closing square brackets, but I've forgotten the ending bracket right here. But notice a kind of interesting thing happens. As we're using this, particularly within a Harlow, it won't show up as a link. However, once I have that final closing square bracket, notice it's changed right here, and I have a link over here. So whenever we're using links between passages, one of the common things we can check is, does that other passage exist? Is there an arrow to it within this mapping right here? And of course, does it slightly different? So if we have a link, we have two opening, two closing square brackets. Notice it's just a slightly different color. So pretty common mistake we can get ourselves into, not having the correct symbols when we're working with links. Commonly, when we're working with macros, especially macros and hooks, we can get ourselves in a little bit of the same situation. Notice right here I have text style. And then I have what appears to be start, but doesn't have an ending square bracket. Now, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to build and play the story and point something out. Generally, Harlow will tell you, hey, the changer should be stored in a variable or attached to a hook. Oh, we've forgotten something. So that will give us some information that something's going on with textile. And then we can relook right here, common issue, and go, oh, you know what? I might have forgotten the end of that hook. And notice, of course, that the color changes. Pretty commonly, the colors and highlighting within working with Harlow and Twine will give us the information we need to just double check everything. So pretty common issue number one, having the incorrect symbols or number of symbols. We've forgotten a closing square bracket or a opening parentheses or something else. Generally, though, notice things like this. It won't show up correctly if we're missing the correct symbol right here, and it will show up and everything will be the correct colors that we anticipate working with macros and hooks and links when we have the correct symbols. So common issue number one, we accidentally forgotten to type something. We can just double check ourselves, make sure everything looks the way it should, and work with that. Let's move over to common issue number two. This is a very nefarious issue people sometimes get themselves into, especially in complex stories. Pretty commonly, we will attempt to use the value of a variable before we've defined it. And that can very commonly happen, especially in complex stories where we might be using variables in different ways. There might be lots of movement between different passages. and no, we've forgotten to define a variable somewhere. The other thing that can happen to kind of part B of this is we've misspelled the name of a variable. That happens to me quite often, in fact. I'll be typing and not paying attention, and I've swapped some letters or something like that. So let me show you an example right here. Literally showed up right here as a story-wide uh, story variable named example set to zero. And then let's say I wanted to show that variable value. Well, I have accidentally misspelled it, but it appears correct. So sometimes missing the correct symbols will be shown to us right here. But in this case, we have all the correct symbols. It still doesn't show up correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and build and play from this point. So I'm going to go ahead and change a start to common issue two, build and play. And then we're going to have a zero. And that's going to seem a little odd because right here, common issue we can get ourselves into. Example is set to zero, but example or example apple, where I've right here transposed these two letters will be zero. So if I fix this, notice these now map together or are highlighted back to each other. So pretty common a pretty common problem and situation we can get ourselves into. We're attempting to use the value of a variable before it's defined. 
pretty easy way to check that is just make sure everything's defined you before you need to use it. Or if it isn't, go back a passage, go back a couple of passage, make sure these things are defined. In a Harlow, at least currently in 3.3, if the variable is not defined, it will have the value of zero. Although, don't depend on that. So it will have that default value of zero, but again, don't necessarily think that will be the same in the future. So don't necessarily plan on that within your code. Always double check right here if you're using the variable within the same passage that everything maps exactly back the way you expect it to. And that way you'll catch a common, common misspellings. I find that within myself. Again, sometimes transposing letters can get myself into trouble and just double checking, oh, is this exactly what I'm looking for? Maybe I've used it multiple times in the same passage. So common issue one, missing the correct symbols, common issue two, working with the values of errors before they're defined or misspellings. So let's look at one last common issue we can get ourselves into. Pretty commonly in older versions of Harlow, we used to accidentally misspell macros. It's gotten a little harder to do that in the current version of 3.3, but it's a very common problem in the past. And it's very similar to what we just saw with issue two. We might accidentally misspell a macro. I might have meant textile, and instead I wrote textiles, plural. But notice right here, again, with the colors in the current version of Harlow, it will flag this. Hey, this is a call to a non-existent or misspelled macro. So the colors will guide us and go, ah, oh, right, I've accidentally misspelled this. I can take this out, and it says, oh, did you mean textile? If I put the cursor over it and give it just a second to kind of catch up, it tells us, oh, this is textile, this is a change or macro, place to the left-hand side, does something, right? And that gives a little more information about kind of what we want to do and how we might want to use it. So right here we have, again, notice right here, applies one or more selected styles and give this macro one of these strings and then it gives us all the strings. So if we accidentally misspelled underline, we could just double check, oh, is that exactly what I meant? So a little harder to do in Harlow 3.3, but common in older versions of Harlow didn't necessarily have this highlighting for us and colors for us. So three common issues we can get ourselves into. For the first, having incorrect symbols or uh, the wrong number of symbols, as I sold, showed right here in this example, in which case, always double check the colors appear correctly, always double check that your links, um, if you're using a link from one passage to another, actually appears, double check that you have the correct names of passages, and double check that the hooks and corresponding macros show up under the right colors. Right here, notice it's just a slightly different color than this kind of white background right here. And common issue two, right, attempting to use the value of a variable for it's defined. Always double check we have the correct variables when we are expecting them. And if we're using things like this startup tag, that they are defined before we start using them. And if we've accidentally misspelled something, at least in the same passage, we can just double check, oh, is this the correct thing I expect to see? And if it is, fantastic. If it isn't, just double check, at least for me, transposing of letters. So it's a problem I get myself into. Finally, we saw incorrect macro names, so if we're working with this, right, we accidentally typed textiles, it will tell us, hey, that doesn't exist. I don't know what that is, right, but we meant textile. And then we can double check using right here the little hover tooltip that this is the actual macro we meant and possible things we might use with it, underlying being one of them. So three common issues we find ourselves doing accidentally sometimes in Harlow and common solutions to just get around these issues, double check our code, make sure all of our stories are working correctly in Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.